Hey everyone, this is Rosie, and today I'd like to talk about how I make a sock on the Lamb LT150 Circular Sock Knitting Machine. So, let's get started. I want to start by showing you how to switch from cylinder mode to camshell mode, and then switch back from camshell mode to cylinder mode. So, let's just go over a couple of things first. Right here is your winged yarn guide. And then this one here is the tall yarn guide. You have another tall yarn guide over here, but we won't be talking about that one in this video. Then I have my green start needle right here. And then this blue mark is halfway around the cylinder. Right here inside the cylinder, you have these two protrusions, and they're called tangs. Then switching between the two operations, there are a few things that you need to know where they are and what they are. Right here you have what's called a camshell plunger. This one is silver, and then there's another one in the back, and I'll put a picture that you can see, the one in the back. The one in the back is black. Then right over here in the back, you have what's called the cylinder stop pin. And then there's another one here in the front. You can't see it in this view, but I will put a picture so that you can see both of them. So there's one towards the back of the machine and one towards the front of the machine. Then there are also two cylinder drive levels. One is right here where my finger is, and the other one is on the opposite side. And again, I'll put a picture up here so that you can see both of them. So right now I'm in cylinder mode, and that means that the cylinder is moving around the camshell, and the camshell is staying still. To switch this to camshell mode, I have to first disengage my cylinder. So you want to rotate the cylinder until your green start needle is in the same spot where the front camshell plunger is. Now, I'm assuming that you are using the markings that were set at the factory for both the start needle and the halfway point. So assuming that you're still using those same markings, when you get right here with your green needle next to the plunger, you're going to take your thumb and you're going to rest it on the shelf here. I'm just going to slide my thumb back. And then you want to put your index finger on that pin. And as you crank, you're going to push down on the table with your thumb and push up on the pin with your index finger. You don't have to press hard, but you're going to press. And when the green needle gets to the 3 o'clock position, that pin should move up into the cylinder. And it just clicked up right now. And when that one clicks, then you go to the front pin and you click that one up as well. So you're pushing it up. Now I'm cranking backwards and forwards and nothing is moving, which is exactly what's supposed to be happening. Now, to get the camshell to move, you want to put your finger on the top of the camshell plunger, and you're going to start rotating the crank handle towards you. Okay, and now it went down, it should go all the way down, and then you're going to keep cranking, and you're going to push the one, the black one in the back, down as well. All right, and now the camshell is moving around the cylinder. Now, if I want to go back to cylinder mode, what I need to do is disengage the camshell. So I bring the camshell around to the front until the plunger, the silver plunger, is right above this little opening again. And then I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to pull up on that plunger and once that one's all the way up, then I pull up on the black plunger in the back. All right, and now I'm once again in that neutral mode. Now to get my cylinder to start moving, I need to reach back here and pull down on that pin that we pushed up previously. Then you're going to pull the pin in the front down as well. And you can see I'm still not spinning my cylinder. What I need to do is I need to push in these levers right here, these cylinder levers. And as I crank, I push, and then I push in the one on the other side, and now I'm back into cylinder mode. When you're in cylinder mode, you will always be cranking away from yourself. 
And while you're in cylinder mode, if you're only doing knit stitches, you can either use the winged yarn guide or the tall yarn guide. But I prefer to always use my winged yarn guide when I'm knitting. If you're in cylinder mode and you have your ribber on and you're doing rib stitches, you have to use your tall yarn guide. You cannot use the winged yarn guide for rib stitches. Now I'm going to switch back to camshell mode. And in camshell mode, the camshell will move in either direction around the cylinder by either cranking backwards or forwards. Now when you're in the camshell mode, you cannot use the tall yarn guide because the tall yarn guide will only knit in the forward direction. It will not knit if you're going in reverse. So in camshell mode you must use your winged yarn guide. To do a heel you always need to be in camshell mode and you need to use the winged yarn guide. To lower the ribber into the cylinder you're going to hold on to this knob here and you're going to see that right over here there's a very long key and right over here there's a little keyhole so it's just a little square or rectangular hole. What you want to do to drop down your cylinder is turn this knob so that the key lines up with the hole and then you're going to start lowering the ribber into the cylinder. As you're lowering the ribber into your cylinder you want to line up the green marking on the ribber with the green start needle on the cylinder. And then I like to give that a little push just to make sure that it's seated in properly. The opening that's right here, this window, this is the only place where you can move needles from the cylinder to the ribber and from the ribber back to the cylinder. So when you're changing the position of the needles, you always need to make sure that your needles are within this window area right here. This is the take up roller that's going to be installed under the machine that you're going to hang your weights from as your sock increases in size. You'll roll the sock up onto this roller and the roller needs to be rolling away from you as you roll up the sock. Now this will only roll in one direction. Right now I'm holding it from this black nub on this side right here and if I hold just that nub you can see that it rolls away from me. But if I turn it in this direction and hold the black nub on this side, it's not going to turn at all. So what you need to do is make sure that you're installing it underneath the machine in the right orientation, which is holding the black nub here and rolling the roller away from you. Then once you have it in the correct orientation, you'll take the wire and you're going to Hook that onto the end of those black nubs. Your sock would already have been rolled onto here and then you'll put the wire on and you'll hang your weights from this point right here. As you change your stitch length on the machine you're going to see that the cylinder actually physically moves up as you increase the stitch length and it moves back down as you decrease the stitch length. Now this is important because when you put the ribber in, you need to set the gap here between the top of the cylinder and the top of the ribber. And you're going to set that based on Lamb's recommendations. But if you change your stitch length, the gap is going to change. So just be mindful of the fact that you may need to change your gap if you change your stitch length. The range for setting the gap on your cylinder can be between 1 16th of an inch and 3 32nds of an inch. So that's talking about the space between the cylinder and the top of the ribber. 
I like to stick with 3 30 seconds of an inch because I tend to use the same yarn all the time. But if you're using yarns of different thicknesses, you might want to change the gap on your cylinder based on the yarn that you're using. This is the tool that I like to use to set the gap between my ribber and my cylinder. It's a digital caliper and it measures depth. And I want to use the depth measurement to set my gap. Now, the depth measurement will be done from the bottom of the caliper. As I move this right here to set my depth, you're going to see this rod come out and that's what we want to use. We want to use this rod to set our depth. I have my caliper set to 0.094 inches. That's 3 30 seconds of an inch as a decimal. And then I'm just going to take the bottom of that caliper and rest it right on top of the ribber and I want the little rod that's coming out of the end to be touching the cylinder. If it is, then that means that my cylinder is set to the correct height. If it's not set at the correct height, you're going to use the knob at the top of the ribber assembly to change the height of that ribber. Now I'm going to link to the video that Amy from Lamb did on how to do this because she did a really excellent job and she explains the process very, very well. We can go ahead and make a sock now, but keep in mind this video is not really about how to make a sock, it's about how to make a sock on this machine. So we need to know when to change between cylinder mode and camshell mode, and when we need to change from camshell mode to cylinder mode, how to get the sock started, finished, etc. For this demo I'm using a 66 cylinder with a 33 ribber, and I'm going to cast on with every other needle. I am using the markings that were set at the factory for both my start needle and my halfway point. Assuming that you are using those same settings that were set at the factory, your start needle always needs to be a cylinder needle. To hang your bonnet, you want your start needle to be at the 3 o'clock position, and my start needle is marked in the green. I'm going to take the wing guide and move it out of the way and then I can start hanging my loops. I put my first one on the start needle, right near the start needle, and then the second one I hang, I like to put at the halfway mark. Then once I have those loops, those two loops on, I can go ahead and start putting loops on all of the needles that are standing up. Now this bonnet is really for a 72 cylinder, but that's okay with me. So put loops on as many needles as you have standing up. And again, I am using a 66 cylinder with a 33 ribber, which will give me a one by one rib sock. Now the needles that are still down in the cylinder right now, we can hang the loops on those needles as we start to crank around. Now we'll bring down the waist yarn from the thread mast, and I have it right here, you're going to start by putting it in the little opening in the winged guide, then I'll push my wing guide back towards the cylinder, and then I want to catch that yarn in these two eyelet hooks right here, just like this. After your waist yarn is threaded, you want to take the tail and let that fall down into your cast on bonnet. And I like my start needle to be the first one that knits. If it doesn't knit, I don't get crazy about it, it's not a big deal. Now, I'm holding on to the ring of the bonnet and I'm pulling it down into the cylinder with my fingers. You don't want to have any weights on at this point. And you start cranking around slowly, making sure that your needles are catching. And then you can go ahead and put loops on these needles here, those were the ones that were dropped down into the cylinder before. 
and now you're just going to crank around a few rows of lace yarn. And at this point now, I can go ahead and engage those weights. And then I usually just like to crank maybe 10 rows or so. And I do check to make sure that I have a stitch on every single needle. And once I'm sure of that, I stop with my start needle at the 3 o'clock position again. And now I can go ahead and cut off the waist yarn. I'm going to move the guide out of the way. And then I want to bring that waist yarn to right in front of my start needle. So my project yarn and my waist yarn are going to share that start needle. And now I can go ahead and start adding in my project yarn. I have my project yarn threaded onto the machine and you'll do that exactly the same way that you did for the waist yarn. At this point right now we're still using the winged guide. And I took the tail of the waist yarn and I dropped it down into the sock bonnet here and you want to leave yourself a good enough tail. Now as we knit we want to make sure that both the waist yarn and the project yarn are going to catch on that needle there. That's our start needle. So you're just going to go very slowly and make sure that all of your needles are catching. I'm going to knit around one row. And now we're back to the start needle again. Now I'm going to start knitting a second row. But for the second row, we want to stop with the green start needle right where the spring extender is. So I'll again, slowly knit around. And now my green start needle is above the spring extender and now I can bring in my river. When you bring in the river, you want the green mark on the river to be lined up with the green mark on your start needle. And you'll gently place the river down into the cylinder and then you'll just give it a little push to make sure that the river and the cylinder are engaging properly. And now we can go ahead and put in our river needles. So what I like to do is take a river needle and open the latch. Then I'm going to pull one of these cylinder needles forward and I'm going to pick up those two bars. And those were the bars that were created from the two rows that we just knitted. And then you'll pivot and place the needle down into the river. Then I'm going to advance just a tiny bit. And now I'm going to put in a second one. The only time you can change the needles from the river to the cylinder is when you're in front of this opening right here. And that's always right where the spring extender is. So you want to be very mindful of where that opening is. Now, the other thing is, as you're moving this around to put in those river needles, you want to make sure that all of your yarn is catching in the hooks over here. Now that I have a few of these river needles in place, I need to go ahead and switch out the winged yarn guide for the tall yarn guide. The reason why we need to do this is because the wing guide is not capable of knitting rib stitches. So you need to use the tall yarn guide when you're ribbing stitches. And you want to make sure that you switch everything out before those needles get to where the yarn guide is. So you'll go ahead and remove the yarn from those hooks there. And then you can move the winged yarn guide out of the way. And then you're going to unscrew the tall guide. Or just loosen it up. Then you want to tighten the screw back down. Then you'll take the yarn 
and put it through the eyelet and then you also want to thread it in the little S hook that's down here. Now that the tall yarn guide is in place and it's all threaded up, you just want to make sure that the yarn is going to catch in the hooks because as you change over things can get displaced. Now you may wonder can I just start this whole process with the tall yarn guide and the answer is yes you can. This is just the way I do it and you don't have to do it this way if you prefer not to. So now you're going to start cranking around and we're going to continue putting in our river needles. And as you crank just always make sure that the yarn is being caught in the hooks. So I just crank forward slowly and I constantly make sure that the hook of these needles here is catching my yarn. And you'll just keep doing this all the way around, placing in your ribber needles. As you place these ribber needles in and push them down into the ribber, just check to make sure that your latch is open. And now we're coming around to knitting the first ribber needles. You again want to make sure that the hook is going to catch the yarn. So as I put in my needles and crank around, I just keep checking to make sure that the yarn is engaging properly with the needles and I make sure that all of the latches are open on my ribber needles. I'm about to put in my last river needle. And once I have that needle in, I want to crank around with my start needle at the three o'clock position. And then I'm going to go ahead and set my counter by pressing in the button there. For my sock, I want 90 rows of ribbed knitting. So you're just going to crank around until you get to 90. Now I just finished ribbing 70 rows and I'm at the point where I need to put on the roller. So once again, here's the roller. I'm just going to hold it by the black nub and I want it to roll away from me. Now, if I reverse it and I hold the nub on this side, it's not going to move. So it will only move in one direction. And that's how I know that this is the orientation that the roller needs to go on to my sock bonnet. Now that my roller is engaged, I can continue cranking. And I'm going to crank until my counter reaches 90. 
Once you've reached your desired number of rows for your ribbing, we now need to take all of the ribber needles out and place them back into the cylinder. So to do that, you need to bring your start needle back over to this window area right here, which will be above your spring extender. So you'll just crank around to that spot. And I'm going to stop right there. And you'll pull out the spring and place it into the spring extender. And now you can start removing all of the needles. So you're just going to pull them out, twist them around, place them back into the cylinder. And you'll do this all the way around. Make sure that all of your latches are open. And that's something I check constantly when I do this. Also, as I'm Making the change over, I again watch my yarn over here to make sure that yarn is being caught in the hooks of the needles. So you'll just keep doing this until you get back to where you started. And you want to make sure that as you're cranking around that you're not going past that window area to remove your ribber needles. Now I have a latch here that was closed, so I'm making sure that that's staying opened. After the last needle is in the cylinder, you can go ahead and engage that cylinder spring again. And then we can also go ahead and remove the ribber. And then we can just keep cranking around here. I'm going to do 20 rows for a pre-heel. See right here I have a latch that's closing on me, so I need to fix that. You need to be very careful with your latches. And as I go around the first time, I do check them very carefully. And I drop the stitch. Now that my start needle's back at the three o'clock position, I'm going to Set my counter again to do 20 rows for a preheal. I'm not going to stop to fix that stitch because this is really just about how to make a sock on this machine. Now I've just reached my 20th row of preheal. So what I need to do next is disengage from cylinder mode and go into camshell mode. And the way I'm going to do that is bring my start needle right around to where the stopper is. And when it gets to this stopper in the front right here, I'm going to put my thumb on the back of the machine and I'm going to push up with my index finger. And I'm going to crank around very slowly. And when the start needle gets to 3 o'clock, it should engage. 
So the pin is now engaged on the back. Now I'm going to push up the pin in the front. And now I'm in neutral mode. So the next thing to do is push down the plunger here in the front. And I'm cranking towards myself as I push. And then I push the one in the back. And now the camshell will start to move. At this point, we need to raise up all the needles between the green start needle and the blue halfway mark needle. And you're raising the needles that are behind those marks. So the blue needle stays down and the green needle stays down, but all the needles behind those two marks go up. And now we need to disengage the tall yarn guide and put on the winged yarn guide. And you really do have to do this because the tall yarn guide will only knit in one direction. So tighten it up and then you can go ahead and rethread that winged guide. After disengaging the tall yarn guide, you can go ahead and crank around past your blue needle. Then you're going to engage your heel spring. And I have my tension set at two, and I usually keep it at two for my entire sock. I don't make any changes. So if you like to change the tension when you do your heel, this is the time to do it. My heel is almost done. I just need to do one more pass over to the side to complete the heel. But when we do that, we want to switch now from camshell mode back into cylinder mode. So we need to watch very carefully for that silver plunger to hit this point here, and it's going to happen very fast. So you want to start cranking around, and as soon as the silver plunger is right above the opening. You want to stop. You're going to pull the plunger up to disengage the camshell and then you're also going to pull up on the one on the back. And now once again we're in neutral mode. Now you want to reach underneath right here where that cylinder pin is and pull it down. And then you'll pull down on the one in the front. Then you're going to start cranking away from yourself and as you crank you want to push those cylinder levers back in place. Remember there's one in the front and one in the back. And then once you're back into cylinder mode you'll start pushing down all of those cylinder needles and make sure that your latches are open. And I'm going to crank about 52 rows for the foot so you want to reset your counter at this point. And then you're just going to start cranking around. Make sure that you disengage your heel spring. Once all your needles are down, you can just go ahead and crank around for however many rows you want to do your foot. My counter just hit 52 rows, so I once again need to switch from cylinder mode back to camshell mode so that I can do my toe. So I'm going to bring the start needle right above the plunger in the front. I'm going to place my hand on the back of the machine and I'm going to push up on the cylinder pin. And it should engage right at three o'clock. Then you push up the one in the front. Then you'll be in neutral mode. And then you need to push down on the front plunger as you're cranking towards yourself. And then you'll push down on the rear plunger. Again, as you're cranking towards yourself, stop at the six o'clock position and raise up all the same needles that you did for the heel so that you can do your toe. And again, you're raising all the needles behind your green start needle and your blue halfway needle.
then you can continue cranking to the left side of the machine, engage your heel spring, and then start your toe. I just finished completing my toe. Now if you remember when we did the heel, I did a last pass with the wing guide stopping on the left side of the machine where the blue mark is. And when I did that pass, that was the last row for the heel. But for the toe, I stop on the right side of the machine where the green start needle is. And the reason why is because when you do your Kitchener stitch, the Kitchener stitch is going to be that last row for you. So I always stop on the right side of the machine when I'm doing my toe. Now you can go ahead and clip off your project yarn. I'm going to bring this around just a little bit closer here. And I'm going to unthread my project yarn. And I'll roll this up and put it back into the cylinder here. And then I'm going to go ahead and re-thread in my waist yarn to finish off the stock. Now you can stay in camshell mode to do this. You don't have to go back into cylinder mode. So now that everything is re-threaded, I'm just very carefully going to bring around the carrier here. Make sure that everything is falling into the hooks of the needles. But I'll stop when I get to the front. So I'm stopping with my yarn guide now at the 6 o'clock position and I'll go ahead and lower down all of those needles. Make sure that all of your latches are open. And then you can finish up by cranking about 10 rows of waist yarn. And then you can just cut off your waist yarn and keep cranking and the sock will come off of the cylinder. And that is how I like to make a sock on the LT150.